Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the anatomy of the stomach. Now, the stomach is the widest portion of the gastrointestinal tract. Remember, that's that big long tube that starts at the mouth and snakes its way all the way down to the anus. Now, it's not just this pit or this storage unit for food. The stomach is actually a dynamic active organ. And what it does is it plays an important role for both mechanical digestion, that's tearing foodstuffs apart, and chemical digestion, which is utilizing molecular scissors that we term enzymes to break food apart. All right, now if we were to locate the stomach on my anatomy, the very first part of the stomach is going to be what we term the cardiac orifice. This is where the esophagus turns into the stomach. So that means as the esophagus moves down the thoracic area through the diaphragm into the abdominal area, it actually goes from being midline to a little bit left of the midline and it starts to curve away. Now as it curves away, it starts to form that cardiac orifice of the stomach and in order to identify the cardiac orifice, there's an easy way to do it. Get a ruler, take your left incisor and measure 40 centimeters straight down. Take you to around about here and that's going to be where your cardiac orifice is. That's this portion, the very first part of the stomach. Now, as you can see, to the left of the cardiac orifice is the roof of the stomach that we term the fundus. Now, the fundus has a number of different glands in there that I'll talk about in a future video, but if you want to identify the fundus on your body, it's going to sit at around about the fifth rib. In actual fact, it go mid-clavicular, find your clavicle, go mid-clavicle, go all the way down until you're below your nipple, just below your nipple, that's around about the fifth rib. This is where your fundus is of your stomach, okay? Now, if you have stomach pain, you don't actually feel it in this area, you feel it in the epigastric area, and that's got to do with embryological origins. When you were developing in your mummy's tummy or womb, it has to do with that, all right? So you've also got the body of the stomach, which is the majority of it. You've got the pyloric area, and the pyloric area has the pyloric antrum, then the pyloric canal, and then the very first part of the small intestines that we term the duodenum. Now, the lateral boundaries of the stomach and medial boundaries include the lesser curvature and the greater curvature of the stomach as well. And in addition to that, you can say I've cut out some portions of the stomach here. This is the musculature of the stomach. Remember, if we were to look at the histology or the layers of tissue of the stomach, you're gonna find that the most internal is going to be the mucosal, then there's gonna be the submucosal, then the muscle layer, and then the serosal layer, which anchors it to the body. Now the muscle layer, throughout the entire GIT, mouth to anus, has two muscles circular muscles, longitudinal muscles, but the stomach has an additional one called an oblique muscle, which is at an angle. This oblique muscle, in collaboration with the circular and longitudinal, allows for the, muscle, uh, the stomach to actually fold in upon itself and jackknife. This plays a very important role in that mechanical digestion, okay? Now, if you look at the blood vessels that supply the stomach, I've done a video on it, but we know that around about here, you're gonna have the abdominal aorta with a branch called the celiac trunk, and the celiac trunk has a couple of branches, one of which is the left gastric artery, which comes and gives oxygen and nutrients to the lowest part of the esophagus and the superior portion of the lesser curvature. Then you've got the splenic artery, which branches off, goes behind the stomach, feeds the spleen, also up to the fundus and the superior portion of the greater curvature. Then you're gonna have a branch to go up to the liver because the liver sits across that side and that's called the hepatic artery and that has a branch. The hepatic artery will feed the lesser curvature of the stomach and there's another branch that comes off and feeds the inferior portion of the greater curvature. There's a lot of stuff there. When it comes to uh, nerves that innervate, we look at the vagus nerve. That's the 10th cranial nerve. It's the wanderer. It goes below the head and neck, goes to the stomach. And when it innervates the stomach, it tells the stomach to start moving. The motility of the stomach starts to release enzymes and mucus from the glands, start to relax the pyloric sphincter to move foodstuffs through. That is the vagus nerve. That's parasympathetic innervation of the stomach. What about sympathetic innervation of the stomach? That's gonna come from around about thoracic five to thoracic eight by the splanchnic area, uh, the splanchnic nerves, and that's gonna stop the stomach from doing those sort of digestive activities. So this is a quick overview of the anatomy of the stomach. 